Christchurch massive in the house. Very happy with that. Great start today. Happy with that. Um, where do we? Actually, I'll start with this. I did not realise that Untouched World, because obviously I've seen the brand as a um, as a kid growing up and and around the show, but I didn't realise that um, it's the the was it the world's first and only uh, lifestyle fashion company that has been recognised by the UN for sustainability. Yes. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, uh, that's that pretty mega. Out, uh, way back in um, 2007, and uh, we've been on this uh, sustainability journey since uh, year 2000. And uh, we got a phone call from someone in Paris from UNESCO saying they'd heard about what we're doing. Could we send some information over? Um, and then they we did that, and then they invited us up to a meeting in Bonn where we were the opening um, presenters, 44 countries, and it just kind of went from there. We ended up getting working with them really um, closely, helping them with, um, you know, developing policy at the time that was around trying to get more corporates engaged uh, mm. in, in sustainability. Why so, so yes. early? Like, that's 2007 super, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, Sustainability now feels like entrepreneurship. It's super cool, right? It's very cool to be sustainable. It's like, I mean, but in 2007, just like I guess entrepreneurship, that shit was not cool. Why, no, it wasn't cool. <laughs> why the driver so early in the game when everyone else wasn't even really touching it or addressing it, especially from a corporate well, side? What was, the, really, what was the hook? Well, it was a really good question, but uh, I had started this company. It was then called Snowy Peak Limited uh, way back in 1981. And before I was um, born, I was, exactly way before, um, probably before your parents were born. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I had been traveling around the world exporting um, our product, and because it was a winter only product, I was uh, going to most places just once a year. And I was just seeing the environmental degradation going on. So we're, we're talking in the 90s here. And so we had no electronic or digital communication. So outside each plane door, there would be a pile of newspapers um, for every, every country or town that fed into that flight or was feeding out of that flight. So I spent a lot of time reading newspapers, uh, a lot of long haul travel, obviously, from New Zealand. And hang on, I think in the worst year, I spent about five months traveling. Um, and I really noticed the change in places year on year from when I um, was visiting the last year. And then I started to understand the impact that cotton was having on the planet. Hideous, um, you know, with all the pesticides and herbicides and, and the damage to the land and the damage to people. I ended up at an exhibition next door to Patagonia and learned a whole lot more about that. Mm. And uh, I gradually got to the point where I got really worried about the trajectory the world was on because there was just no conversation anywhere at any time about what type of growth uh, mm. was desirable and, and what wasn't. So it was all about GDP and lauding businesses that were doing really well. And I was also on the manufacturers uh, board at that time, the association board. And that too was just about, well, how do we kind of wrought the regulations so that we can allow this company to pump, pump their chemicals you know, out into the river? So basically so, everyone hated you as soon as you started talking about it. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I just, I kept thinking, well, I'm just one person, one company, little country down at the bottom of the world. I can't make a difference. But then I think, well, hell, this is an issue. So any long story short, I decided that we needed to set something up um, to at least make a small difference and maybe we could influence uh, people that could make a difference. It's that and, butterfly effect, right? Um, yeah, so that's what we did. And uh, I remember talking to a PR person about year 2000, and she said, you're way before your time, and this is just too hard. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and yeah, so it's, it's been, a, um, been an interesting journey. So the, 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 the whole push down sustainability post-COVID, after COVID AC, do you, 
businesses are readdressing everything now, right? Like how the business operates, what it does. Some, some even in type of the entire businesses, the whole thing's been flipped upside down. Do you think this is going to be a time that at mass all businesses are actually going to look at not only how their business is done, but how it's done, especially when it comes to sustainability? Like, do you think this will be a tipping point for businesses addressing this for a better future for, for not just profits? I think it will. Um, I think, I do think that things have been tipped upside down and I think that people are now thinking more about value and I think I like to think that there's a lot more um, heart in the world now rather than um, just what's on the surface. And uh, I think we're even seeing that, uh, you know, since uh, since COVID and just with the people that have been incredibly supporting us. And, you know, I think that helps people feel good about themselves if they're making a difference directly or indirectly with, with what they do. So I do think that, um, I don't think we'll go back to where we were. I just yeah. don't. I totally agree. Even just the, what's become very clear is just the, the overwhelming push towards kind of that hyper local resilience to really back back the local but with yeah. care and with love so i think that yeah. like leading with love and that that heart piece with i guess where the consumers yeah. are going to be spending each dollar i think there's got there's a diff, a bit of a different filter on it now it feels like that they're that they're gonna you know, subconsciously ask themselves so with with covid right shit show everything goes to zero everything pushes stop the entire world goes to goes to pause for a second what happened to like all your supply chain implications and like physically and logistics with staffing and factories and like just what what happened from your side was it just a flipping gong show like how how bad did everything well, hold no, up in terms of logistics no 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 because we're made in new zealand and but, but, we, but, but it was still pause here like nothing else changed like no export uh, just the market, just getting to the markets was was the issue, yeah. Um, but we didn't have an issue creating products. Uh, we did, uh, at the beginning of about February, end of, end of January, start making, developing um, recycled, re, uh, not recycled, uh, washable, reusable masks because Absolutely. I could see that that was an issue from a sustainability point of view. Uh, and... That became interesting, trying to source some of the bits and pieces that we needed for those uh, was, was just hideous, you know, trying to get simple things like elastic and, and so on. Because um, was it an essential service for that? Is that how you... Yeah, we had to register as an essential service initially and, uh, and, then, and then operate it as an essential service. It took me back, actually back to my old nursing days <laughs> where everyone was in here in um, theatre gowns and covered heads and masks and... <laughs> It was great. Yeah, it's good. I saw. So yeah. apart from a few localized, you know, sourcing issues, everything else kind of just just rolled. And so, how is the business sort of cranked back up, coming from level two into um, level three into level two? Well, uh, obviously, we've got uh, five retail stores, so those were able to open, and our stockists in New Zealand were able to open, our stockists in Australia had been open for um, pretty much all, most of them, pretty much all the way through. A huge part of our business though has been in selling to, uh, in places where people visit, um, where tourists go. So our biggest stockists, stockists globally have just shut the doors. They've just shuttered their business and, and gone home, made the staff redundant. So. Going to level two doesn't change that. Uh, we have to, um, you know, develop those parts of the business in some other way, some other, some other access for that. So it certainly had a big impact on us. There's, there's mm. no doubt about that. Um, and so that there's been ups and there's been certainly been downs. Yeah. What a what a what a trip, especially for you know 30 years in the game cranking it. Oh shit, 40 years in the game cranking it out. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, fa I failed um, my high school method out of nowhere, but it's fine. Um, how do you think retail's 
retail will change after this like obviously you know you, you've got you've got stores there's a bunch of stuff that's gone online like how do you think the 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 e-com landscape will change and shift after this from a local and at a, and a, a global level what's your sort of take on it um well i think the e-com landscape's changing really really fast uh and it was changing and 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 it, that will continue to be um a major a major development point everybody is talking econ, um, but I still think that humans have a spirit and they have a heart, and they do want to get out and touch and feel. And I don't think I don't believe that the um, the retail store as an entity has um, has gone or has got a a, um, a finite life ahead of it. I just think it has to be worked really well alongside um, digital so that you're making the experience as um, as easy and comfortable for customers as possible so they've got the choice of whether they want to um, do their research online and then go and check it out in store or vicky versa or a bit of both um, I, I don't think there's an option these days just to do one or the other yeah, I think well, usually if it was just a box and it's a race to the bottom, it kind of if it's soulless, it just sort of means nothing and it's just transactions, right? But clearly, you know, reshifting these spaces into literally an experience brings more of that sort of value back for it as well. How have you kind yeah. of thought about? Have you thought about repositioning? Has your vision of what um, Untouched World will be actually changed over this COVID thing? Like, how have you? What differences have you? looked at or thought at or thought about a bit differently about you and your business like going coming through this whole thing over the last couple of months like where's the headspace at well it's been really interesting because the whole um experience through COVID has just strengthened our resolve um for being what we are uh and you know we're about lifestyle clothing we're about clothing that that um is is, is, is stylish but easy and I think this whole working from home um, approach has, um, has just really strengthened the need for that type of brand um, at, at, at this stage. We've got another brand, it's called Merino Mink, and that's more of a luxury, um, it's a luxury, uh, what do I call it, classic styling, and that's predominantly been going into the into the tourist markets that's the brand that we're actually having a rethink about yeah got it when during this time obviously everyone goes remote um you you tried to get in with level two with the essential stuff and cranking that out what did you did you notice did you learn anything about the way you lead through this the way you lead yeah did you do you learn anything? yeah 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 um absolutely i think you know going into this the, the most important thing I felt is as we all headed home was to maintain that continuity for staff and maintain the um, the communication was huge so we, I spent I, I worked really hard for, um, for for all of those weeks and spent so much time on zoom uh, we had um, you know daily meetings where we had all our team together and then we had splinter meetings um, and I felt that that was really, really important, and I got it was hard when there were people that weren't. There was some of our team who uh, who work in our production area who weren't that well connected, and and I did worry about um, about them. I was really, really um, aware of the mental health consequences for people of not having their colleagues around them, yep. and um, and then you've got the whole anxiety and the uncertainty. I think the biggest thing with this COVID thing for everyone has been the uncertainty. Um, you can deal with pretty much anything if you know what you're dealing with, but with this, we just haven't known. So that's quite hard when you can't tell your people what's going to happen next or what should happen next. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Cause one of the things we've been so talking about, you know, been lucky enough to talk to a whole bunch of crewers, you know, this first wave of, of medical and health, the second wave, 
that's going to be a bit of a longer tail in terms of you know a couple of years with the economy, so kind of a commercial type of a economic thing. But this third wave of the long tail around like mental health and the the head spaces of so many with relationships and work and stuff like that shit's going to go for potentially decades, right? Because the the such a sharp abrupt thing. So it's actually quite cool that you've you brought that up um, because a lot of people aren't not many other people are really talking about that long tail of it yet so it's kind of very cool that you've you've been pretty tuned up to understand the that the impacts at the moment like this is actually having on on people's uh, mental health as well right yeah i you know i think most of us run on adrenaline to start with when you're going through some, some huge change like that i mean you know 48 hours to sh- pretty much shut down a business of 110 people <clears throat> with remote stores off stores stores, stockists that rely on you, staff that rely on you. That was absolutely huge and, um, and momentous. And then the, um, just the energy that went into, you know, pivoting into, into different product, because our, our big thing was keeping people busy. I think when people are busy, uh, it's much easier to deal with um, what you've got around it. So, we, I mean, we've done some crazy things. We've We've developed a line of soft toys that you, that that knit, and we donated those to people that we spotted were you know kids that have um, parents that are in um, uh, you know in in isolation or need to protect them protect their children from their jobs you know if they're going into the hospitals and so on. So the parents I just read about this mother that was going home and shedding her clothes at the doorstep and going and having a shower and not able to um, hug the children. So we thought, well, let's try and do something for those children. And then we thought about all of those people that have been made um, unemployed. We, I mean, we can't fix all that, but we can do a tiny bit to help. And um, so we've put a whole lot of beanies on the machines, so um, which will um, giveaways. We think there's people that are going to be cold, not able to actually even keep themselves warm this winter, and so that will be a little bit of a heart warmth and a and a head warmth. Um, but the, but the key thing is keeping the staff um, we've got here with something to do. Yeah, it's it's pretty rugged when you think of the butterfly effect of the impact it's had on every single person regardless where they're at and what they do what type of business anything right the whole thing is all so interconnected and, and weaving through yep. um obviously i know you're pretty tapped for time but before we go i was going to ask you know clearly you know you've you've been in the game for a minute and by a minute i mean four decades of of cra- craziness <laughs> so clearly this is a business around legacy right so when you fast forward 140 years out from now, 100 years from now, like what do you kind of feel that you'd like the legacy to be, not only for you, but for for the business and what it represents? I'd really like to um, leave the the world in a better place uh, and through, the, through our business to have actually changed the view in what's important uh, and, uh, and get the concept of businesses doing well and doing doing good while they're doing well not just waiting until they've you know done well and then um trying to do some some good afterwards i mean that's great too but i just think this you know when you look at this business everything's layered every dollar that's spent by by a customer delivers so much value um in so many different directions and and it's not hard actually to do that It's not hard, but a lot of people just chase the doing doing good first, so then they can do well, right? They they go yeah, yeah. They go the other way. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I think the but mindset. I, but that's where I think that's where I think that there could be well be a pivot out of this. Yeah, and totally. I, and I think that the consumer these days is actually going to be asking for the good along with the the well. <laughs> No, it's a definitely a great way to think of it. Um, I know you're very, very busy. Um, lady, I appreciate your time. I know you've been, um, this, we've had a few things to, to juggle. So um, best of luck with all the rest of it. And um, it's super Thank cool you. to see, see the headspace of the stuff that you're into and, and what you're about. Thank so you. as a yeah, fellow Christchurch think, mafia, well done. Yeah, I think you, uh, though, you're a great example of 
what we're trying to do in our Untouched World Foundation, and we're trying to grow people like you. So I'm good on you. You've done well. I appreciate, appreciate it. Or trying, trying. Not bad from a no, kid from my well. that's for sure. Uh, thanks, heaps, and um, best of luck, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mary. See ya. Bye. Mega. Cool, quick chat. Uh, she's a very, 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 very busy lady. Uh, we had to find a, a sweet time slot we could get in and knock it out. So we had 20 minutes on the dot, just hit the 20. Happy with that. Uh, appreciate the time. Uh, untouchedworld.com. I think it was actually super cool that, you know, first in the world to um, get get the stamp from sustainability from the UN. That's fucking epic. Um, and also been uh, that kind of I mean, 40 years smashing the same thing with so much passion it's very clear that she's passionate about uh, not just the product but the people that work for her as well which is super cool so good on you perry that was a, a a rad cool little little banter um all right team enjoy the rest of the day and i'll talk to you soon peace